Welcome to Learn With Mac. Now this week I've been working on shipping containers and you can see a shipping container which I've been modelling down here in the screen. Um, this has been quite difficult actually. Um, they think these are just boxes but in practice they are quite sophisticated designs um, in terms of their structure and the way in which they work. So I've had to do quite a bit of research on the web to actually understand what they do and how to design them. So this is all about um, the next video from Professor Mac, which is going to be on Archimedes principle. And in that video, I'm going to be demonstrating why things float. So for example, um, what happens when you drop a shipping container into water? Um, now, you might think it's going to sink, um, but equally, it may float, and we're going to find out about that as part of the video. So I've had to design one, and this is um, essentially the one I've got. You can see I've got um, some nice labelling on the uh, side of the shipping container. So we've got Professor Mac there, shown there. And it looks a little bit um, uneven from the side, but that's because of the corrugated shape off the side and you can't see that just now I'll switch off the um, view that we have at the moment you'll see it a bit clearer we've had to put on some labeling on the front as well and I've also got a label down here which is uh, demonstrating a container zoned by Professor Mac and it's very watertight it doesn't leak which is going to be very important when we put it down into water um, and it's for experimental use only um, that's what I've done, I've done there. Now, in practice, you wouldn't see that label in the video, but it helps to add some realistic look to the container if we've got various labels put on it. So <clears throat> let me move to another view where you can see a bit more of the geometry which I've been putting together. Um, now, one of the key things about shipping containers are these castings which are at the corners of the shipping containers. And I've had to do a little bit of research on the web there to find out the dimensions of those. Um, but essentially the shape of them enables the um, shipping, shipping container to be locked down onto lorries and onto uh, rail, travel, rail vehicles so that you can transport it without it falling off. You can lock them down. Now, a lot of my work actually was around the doors. And I just do not believe how much detail is in the design of the way in which the door mechanism works. Essentially what you have is some rods which run up and down the shipping container door and these lock into these castings at the top and bottom of the door. And these are onto the uh, frame uh, that runs the header and foot, the header and footing uh, section that runs along the bottom of the shipping container. And essentially, what happens is that you've got a handle, and this is a safety latch which you rotate out of the way. You lift the handle up, and then you can rotate the locking rods, and they'll rotate out of this. Uh, catch point here and that enables you then to open the doors and obviously fill the shipping container with the various goods that you're going to put in there. Around the door is um, hinges so we've got some hinges here and I've, I've put some detail on those hinges you can see even the weld is shown there. Um, they pivot off the side frame of the shipping container and we've also got rubber seals around the doors and of course this is very important for the experiment that Professor Mack is going to do because when he drops the shipping container into the water we obviously want the container to be watertight for a certain period of time so we can see if it floats or not. So that's a key part and I've, I've put a rubber seal around that as you can see. So the shipping container is nearly ready for, uh, for use. Um, obviously I've got to join up to the lifting vehicle and I've still been working on that. So let's have a little look at that. 
So here is the shipping, here is the um, the vehicle which lifts the shipping containers and I'm still doing some work up the front of it. Um, I can put on the wheels, there you go, get a little bit better feel for the proportions of the vehicle. And what I've been doing is putting on the details of the thing at the end of the arm, which essentially is a, a capturing uh, device which I'm going to show more details as I develop that over the next week or so but essentially it expands out to grab hold of the shipping container so that so that it can be lifted but the mechanism around here is quite complicated actually there's a number of pivot points and mechanisms that drive this um, assembly and you've got a, a motor here which rotates the um, whole assembly um, so I've still got to finish that off. There's this is just blocked in here. I've got a lot of detail to put in here and I will carry on with that and show that next time. Um, I have also added now the rear end of the vehicle. Um, before that there, there wasn't um, a rear end to it. I just blocked it out. Um, so now I've added in which what appears to be a, a heavy mass at the back to counteract the, the weight at the front um, when the shipping container is lifted. I've got some lights here as well and there's quite a lot of detail in the lights here you can see and I've also closed off the, the, the structure at the rear. So the next things I need to do are the uh, drive mechanism for the wheels. Um, it's driven by the front um, but it's steered in the rear. Um, so the way in which the vehicle is actually um, manoeuvred around the area that it's working in is through rear wheel steering and you can see that I've already prepared for quite a bit of um, movement and rotation of the wheels because I've got this cutout shape at the back here which should allow us to move the wheels really quite significantly. Um, when we are moving the vehicle around. So I've got to add on the suspension um, and the steering mechanism which will connect the wheels to the body of the vehicle structure and that's the next thing I've got to do. I've also got to work in this area here and this is the cab in which Professor Mack will be sitting. Um, and he'll be sitting in here, he'll be sitting on a chair uh, a seat in there and he will have a steering wheel and some uh, electronic re uh, equipment so that he can identify what's happening at the end of the vehicle. Um, so I'll get that seat in there and I'll get a door on the cab so that it uh, looks more realistic and we can see Professor Mac in there. I've also done a little bit of work um, uh, from the last time on the front of the vehicle. Um, I've just tried to give it a little bit more styling. I'm going to continue this. I'd like to have some feature lines that are added here, which just gives a nicer look to the vehicle. And then I'll keep going with the front spreader um, thing here at the front here, which grabs hold of the shipping container. So I'll get that finished off. So. That's us for the moment. I'll uh, catch up with you next time. So for now, all the best. See you next time. Bye.